Shalom, this is Nehemia Gordon. I'm coming to you today from San Antonio, Texas. I'm sitting here with Deborah Arndt, director of Macor Hebrew Foundation. Shalom, (laughs) y'all! Howdy from Texas. I get lots of emails for people just learning the name of Yehovah. It's huge to them, and it was to me and Tim. Mm. In the very beginning, when we heard the name, and we heard it out of your mouth, and it it totally changed our lives that changed night. Changed my life, too. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, that was 12, 13 years ago. But you told me a lot of the emails you get are people who say, I read Nehemiah's stuff, and I watch the videos, and I see it's Yehovah. But the people told me Yehovah means destruction. Oh, Yehovah. Yeah, we've got a study on that. <laughs> yeah. I did a little thing years ago. It's called the disastrous understanding of the name Yehovah. I just want to quickly talk about that. So if you look in the Strong's Concordance, and let's be honest, the people who are proposing this idea, that's the extent of their Hebrew knowledge. They'll look in the Strong's Concordance and find out there's a word hova, and they'll say that means destruction. And therefore, Yehovah means oh hail destruction. Um, that's not how Hebrew works. <laughs> I'm not even sure it's how English works. I've shared this before that my first job I ever had, I had a guy I was working under and he asked me something and I said, well, I assume. He said, whoa, whoa, stop. Do you know what assume is? I said, no, what's assume? He said, assume is made up of three words, ass, you, me. If you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. And he meant that literally. He believed that assume actually came from the word ass, which is just stupid. And, and I actually looked it up out of curiosity because this is what I do. And I found that it comes from the Latin word asumari. So it has nothing to do with the word ass. It only (laughs) sounds like it. And assume has as much to do with the word ass as Yehovah has to do with the word hovah destruction. In fact, that's deeply offensive to tie in the two. It's ridiculous. What if you take apart God's holy name and strip it of that yud, you turn this holy name Yehovah into destruction. Why would you do that? Your own destruction, your own ruin. His name clearly and indisputably comes from the words hayah, Hove Yehie, which is three forms of the Hebrew verb. He was, he is, he that will be. And the va there comes from Hove, he is. And by the way, Hova, if you take that by itself, coming from that root, doesn't mean destruction. It means she is. Has nothing to do. Hove is, he is, Hova is, she is. Why would you tie it to a completely different word? Again, it's like assumed logic. It makes no sense to a Hebrew speaker. It's ridiculous. It is. It really is ludicrous. This is people who assume they understand Hebrew and they don't. It's not how Hebrew works. And the beauty of Hayahove, he has, you know, was one of the Hebrew voices. I've, I've still got to edit. I interviewed this Samaritan leader. He's written 108 books. He's got me beat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I interviewed him like all day. And I said to him, how do you pronounce the name? He said, we don't pronounce it. In fact, we never pronounced it. I said, no, no, okay, come on. The time of Aaron and Moses, how do they pronounce it? He said, today we say Shema, which is Aramaic for the name. name, And he said, back in the time of Aaron and Moses, we said Asham. Where is that? That actually appears in 2 Kings 17 as one of the gods of the Samaritans. But anyway, let's not talk about that. So back in the time of Aaron and Moses, they said Asham, which he understood to be Hebrew for the name, similar to the Jewish form Hashem. But he didn't say Hashem. He said Asham. Interesting. Anyway. He said, while we never spoke the name, we know what it means. I said, what does it mean? He says it comes from the Hebrew words, which incidentally he pronounced Abba Ebi Ebi because they have a different dialect of Hebrew. Oh, wow. And the fact that he replaced the V with a B tells you that in the early dialect that they derived from, it was a V, right? Otherwise, instead of Abba Ebi Ebi, it would have been Awa Ewi Yewi. And by the way, this is a guy who speaks Arabic, so he can pronounce the W sound. That's his native language, Arabic. The fact that Abba Ebi Ebi, which is the Samaritan corruption of Hayahove Hie, or probably Hava Hove Yehve, meaning there's actually a different dialect of Hebrew that he's going back to, to this northern dialect. So the Samaritan knows the name is Hayahove Hie. He was, he is, he will be. The Jews unanimously agree the name means Hayahove Hie. It comes from Exodus 3.14, where he says, Ehye Asher Ehye, literally, I will be that which I will be. Sometimes translated, I am that which I am. It's more nuanced than that. So he's telling us the meaning of the name, that it's from the root to be. And when you add the yud at the beginning, it means he will. So yud he vav he is a combination of hayah he was, hove he is, yihye he will be. You put those together, you smush them, they're Yehovah. And the Jews agree with that. The Samaritans agree on that. And that's actually even in the New Testament. Do you know that? It's in the book of Revelation. So you have three completely different sources who are not colluding, <laughs> clear, right. meaning like they're not checking with each other, yeah. and they're all agreeing the name is, he was, he is, he will be, Haya Hove, Yehye, nothing to do with destruction. So that's one of those things that gets said and passed around. Oh, it's a meme. 
Yeah. It's a pseudo Hebrew meme. And there's a lot of those people who know just enough Hebrew to be dangerous to themselves and others. And a lot of times they have agenda. They have an emotional attachment to a certain pronunciation of the name and they'll grasp at straws at anything just to try to refute other people's pronunciations, even if it has no basis in anything. For a more detailed explanation of this Hova nonsense, I have a written study on NehemiahsWall.com entitled A Disastrous Misunderstanding of the Name Yehovah. We talked about destruction. Now let's talk about chaos. There's a new proposal making its way through the internet that tries to connect God's holy name with chaos. This comes from an academic scholar in Finland claiming that the ancient Gnostics called God Yahweh. And he talks about how we can determine God's name, the Tetragrammaton, from the pronunciation that we find in the Apocryphon of John. Oh, wow. The Apocryphon of John is a Gnostic book. And I've actually seen people cite this, and they'll say, well, it's in the ancient Gnostic sources. Why would you listen to that Jewish Aleppo Codex? The oh. Jewish Aleppo Codex <laughs> is the source of our Bible today. It's the key source. And, and this was an academic scholar. He's got no skin in the game. I don't even know if he believes in God. But he was saying historically it was originally Yahweh. And the proof for it being Yahweh, this guy in Helsinki says, is that the Gnostics, when they wrote the Apocryphon of John, they speak about a figure called Iaue. And Yahue in Coptic, which is translated from Greek, which is translated in turn from Aramaic and translated from Hebrew, meaning fourth hand. If we take it back through those four layers, then it would have been Yahweh or Yahweh in actual Hebrew. So I looked it up to see what is it talking about. And first of all, just off the bat, in the Gnostic writings, they have at least two different ways of pronouncing God's name. One is Iaue and the other is Iao. But the question is, are they even talking about the same God that we worship? And I read this document and I was just completely shocked by it. So the Gnostic Apocryphon of John, that people who outside the academic world are quoting this and saying, this proves it's Yahweh. I couldn't believe it. So it talks about a demon called Yaldabaoth, which is Aramaic for son of chaos. Ooh. And Yaldabaoth accidentally creates the physical world. This is what the Gnostics believe, that the physical world is evil and it was an accident created by a demon. Look this up, Gnostic Apocryphon of John from Nag Hammadi. And then to try to set things right, Yaldabaoth, the son of chaos, decides to rape Eve and impregnates her with two children, one of whose name is Iaue. So Iaue is essentially a demon who is produced by this other demon whose name is son of chaos. That would make Iaue or Yahweh, that would make Yahweh the grandson of chaos. That's not the God I worship, Deb. No, me either. You have been listening to Hebrew Voices with Nehemia Gordon. Thank you for supporting Nehemia's McCore Hebrew Foundation. Learn more at NehemiahsWall.com.